OK, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the break. It's nice to hear that buzz in the exhibition area, because I think that's always a good sign. Uh, as I said before we broke up, lots of things thrown at you in that early morning session. Hopefully you found some of it interesting, and some of it will stick, as we say. Uh, and I hope those of you got a chance to see the demo around the Geo Tourist stand. They were doing a demo. They'll be there in the lunch break as well. So you'll get a chance to see the stands uh, furthermore and the lunch break. So in this afternoon session, we're going to move into some other areas, a lot of them now from the tourist sector as opposed to the developer sector. And we're going to start off uh, with Mark Irwin, who's the Senior Brand Engagement Manager from Visit Scotland. Before I introduce Mark, I'm just going to ask whether people have been tweeting. Have you been tweeting? Yes? Using the hashtag, please do tweet. And uh, as I was uh, getting ready for this session, I just noticed that Mark describes himself on his Twitter handle as, when I'm not marketing Visit Scotland and acting, I'm generally an Irish twit who is loving life in Scotland. And I thought to myself, that could describe me as well. <laughs> OK. So we're going to begin by just setting up a quick video, which we hope works. My name is Mark Irwin and I'm from Visit Scotland and I'm here today to talk to you about an app that we launched earlier this year for smartphones called Scotland VR. So Scotland VR is a virtual reality travel experience that allows the users, no matter where they are in the world, to be immersed in Scotland's remarkable attractions through 360 video and imagery. So they could be walking through the prehistoric sites of Scarra Bray, soaring over the fourth bridge UNESCO site, travelling through the hollow mountain of Ben Kraken, or standing in remarkable museums such as the National Museum of Scotland here, as well as seeing some of our engineering feats like the Falkirk Wheel and the Glenfinnan Viaduct from unique perspectives. Now the app can be downloaded and used on Android and iPhones via the Google Play and Apple Store, and it can be experienced in 3D using VR cardboards or um, in 360 view via phone mode. But before we launch ourselves fully into the virtual world, I want to keep our feet firmly in reality for a minute. And the reality is that Scottish tourism is worth, tourism is worth 11 billion to the Scottish economy. It supports 8.2% of businesses and 9% of employment. So let's all be clear here. Everyone in this room is pretty important. We're kind of a big deal because we all contribute to this figure. And in order for this figure to maintain and to grow, um, I believe we need to constantly challenge what we do. Um, from the small processes to the big product launches, you know, how can we challenge ourselves to do things better for the visitor themselves, to engage them in a better way? And we, so we took that challenge on ourselves. And back in 2016, this is where our story starts, where we thought, how can we do things better? Those of you that are aware, we have our themed years. And in 2016, it was our year of innovation, architecture, and design. And we wanted to create an innovative digital product that would engage visitors and bridge the two years of 2016 and the current year we're in, the history, heritage, and archaeology. Um, and we wanted to create a, a digital product that engaged people during those I want to get away moments, that discovery period when they're thinking about where to go. 
And at Visit Scotland, we're big believers in collaborating with organizations outside of our own and businesses outside of our own um, when coming up with new ideas and, and new products. Um, to get that fresh thinking is, is vital um, to, to development and encourage everyone to do that. So we're very fortunate. We, um, came across uh, an agency called Interface who connect the academic and the digital world together. And through those connections, we ran a, a competition format and a mentoring program to evolve the idea. So our app was the result of a collaboration effort of academia, digital, and tourism sectors. Um, and the pioneering spirit of all three. And the winning competition uh, academia was uh, Edinburgh Napier University. And they come up with this idea of a virtual Scotland that would allow people to explore attractions in new ways through virtual reality. So what is virtual reality? Virtual reality is this 3D environment that people can interact with and they feel completely immersed in. So that in itself felt like the right thing to do to help promote Scotland and inspire people to come. But before launching in and developing a VR product, we had two key considerations accessibility and affordability. So how do we make sure we reach as wide a network of people as possible with this tech? So first of all, how do we service that VR? And we, you know, we, we realized, as you all know, that the majority of people have one of these. They have a smartphone. Um, so how do we get the virtual reality into that smartphone for them to use it? So we knew we had to create an app that people could download on their smartphone and they could access um, our virtual reality experience. The next was thinking about the headset. So there's such a varying degree of headsets available in the market. And again, thinking about affordability and accessibility, how do we make that, get that to as wide a network as people as possible? So um, we decided to make it available for the VR cardboards themselves, because they could be picked up for around five pound to 15, depending on the brand you have. So they're the most accessible. Those people wanting to try VR or early adopters, that's gonna be a natural step for them because they're not parting with too much cash. But we knew ultimately that the majority of users will not use a VR headset just yet. So we had to make sure we created an app that was available to be used without a headset, it could be used in phone mode. So people can explore the environment you know, through touch screen on their phone or gyroscopic by moving it around and, and that environment will move with them. And with regards to accessibility as well, we, we had to think that um, you know, VR itself is pretty much in its infancy and people needed to be taught how to use it. So we needed to create the right prompts throughout the app to guide them through this experience so they had the, create, they had the most benefit from the experience. Um, and no matter how intuitive we felt it was, we then brought it out for real world testing and we stood in front of the National Museum of Scotland here and grabbed visitors on the way in and went to other tourism hotspots. Um, and that was really valuable insight as to what developments we needed to make within the app to make it more user friendly, to add additional prompts to guide people through it. So it's a really valuable step to do that if you're developing a product to test it with the real market. Um, because as, as good as you think it is, you know, there'll be valuable insights there. You need a bit of thick skin to take that on and then develop it going forward. So why create a VR app? Well, back in 2016, we were looking at the research and the data. And what the data was telling us was that 60% of people um, search for destinations on their mobile device. That coupled with the fact that virtual reality was having this growth period, it uh, created an interesting space for which we could promote Scotland. And it, you know yourselves, choosing where to go on holiday is, is largely based on emotion, and virtual reality creates this interesting space to tap in and incite that emotion during those I want to get away moments. And with over 50% of people saying that an image of a destination inspires them where to go, how exciting is it to think about what the reaction is going to be whenever you put the visitor in that image and they're surrounded by 360, and what impact is that going to make in their decision to come to Scotland? So about the app itself, um, you'll see the name and the app icon in the middle there, Scotland VR. So you know, it's really important, and you need to spend time on that naming convention and what the, what the app icon looks like. And for us, we, we decided we wanted to take the raw and sale approach, so do what it says in the tin. You know, the people were very clear about what they were going to get here. So Scotland, it's about the destination. VR, it's about virtual reality. So we felt we were pretty clear there as to what this app was going to offer them. And then we wanted to create a window into the world of which they were going to experience. So um, we developed an app icon that looked like the environment they were going to be in with the salt tower kind of etched in the sky with a cloud design, which is a recognizable Scottish symbol. So spend time on that aspect if you're ever launching an app to make sure um, people understand it and that it's, uh, it's attractive on their phone, it's attractive in the app store. And again, 
we, when we were doing the testing, we went out to actual visitors to talk to them about this, to get their understanding of when they seen that icon, what did they think the experience was going to be, and that sort of brought us to a few variations. So about the experience itself, you would have seen it in the ad. So it's a three-stage process, really. The first process is, is you're immediately engaged in this Scottish environment. So we used a gaming platform called Unity to build the Scottish Glen. So immediately you're surrounded. You've got stags in front of you, Highland Coos behind you, and you've got this um, 3D map of Scotland that you can interact with. And then stage two is beautiful 3D models that come to life on the map that they can have a look at. And then that brings them through to stage three, which is immersing them in th real 360 video and imagery. So how are people engaging with the app? So seven months worth of data is telling us that we've had about 45,000 installs of the app, which is a strong start. And week one alone was unprecedented levels of, of installs for a virtual reality tourism destination app. To break that down a wee bit more, we've had 58% um, of that has been from paid for media and 42% from earned and owned. So it's really important because sometimes it's very important to get your marketing and commu communication strategy right when launching a product such as this. So sometimes you get bogged down, you get sucked into developing the app and what it's going to be like and is that going to be perfect and sometimes it's, it's easy to negate the, the, the promotion side of it but this is key in order that people see it, install it, use it and understand it. Um, so that 40 odd percent of earned and owned media was really important to us and we made sure we worked with industry contacts to help us promote the app and talk about it and chat about it and we created um, you know, a small toolkit to help that engagement, a small image, few lines linked to the app store. Um, so we talked to attractions within the app, other people in the industry we knew we were going to promote it, looked to see what other new innovative ways we could work with industry to help promote it. So we had a partnership running with Arnold Clark. Um, who used the headsets and the app itself as a bit of queue busting um, during the busy summer periods when people were queuing waiting for a rental car to help inspire them what they were going to see and do in Scotland. Engaging with the right press as well early on so that they, so that they get on board with it. So for this, it was looking at some tech press like Forbes as well as lifestyle press. And, but as well as external stakeholders, it's making sure we had our internal stakeholders ready to go as well. So those people that have their fingers on the comms channels, like the social people, the web people, the email team, that they knew what the messages were, what the app was about, when to help promote it, and um, so that you have this robust strategy of communicating out there through your own owned. But it is essential that you put budget aside for, um, for promotion side as well. Um, and we made sure we worked with an agency that had app promotion experience. Um, we created a very clear brief and worked with them on a robust strategy of a mixture of acquisition and retention. And we tried several forms of media. So we tried display, we tried um, social elements, so using the 360 and Facebook. Um, we tried Google Universal App Campaign to really select segments and target people that were going to use our app. And there's some interesting stuff you can do in that sphere. You can target phones that already have other travel apps on there, um, so you know they're interested in travel, and you can target those people. Um, and, and, and a mixture of incentivized advertising as well. So that was important to boost your rankings within the App Store. When you initially get off the starting block, you want to be visible. Um, and that incentivized advertising raises you up the App Store rank ranking so other people see it and engage with you. And it's vitally important. We've been talking about data a lot this morning. It's vitally important. You know what, on that, we, we regularly researched what the data was telling us from that paid for media. So on a weekly basis, we were sitting with the agency to analyze the data and make tweaks and change it on an ongoing basis so that we maximized um, the, the spend and the installs that we got from that, from that budget. This helped with engagement as well. Um, so this, uh, Apple uh, handpicked at us to be on a featured uh, app this week listing, which really helped with exposure and engagement. And there's a mixture of criteria that they do for that, but ultimately two of the key ones are um, a solid build and uh, sort of good user comments. So we, it's getting, going that testing phase is vital to make sure that you know, you're pretty confident that you've got a solid build here, it's usable, it's friendly um, to go on there. Um, because if you are fortunate enough to get selected, then that really can help with exposure. Um, and we've had some other accolades, thankfully, as well. Um, it's, it's one 
uh, best app in the recently in the uh, Scottish Digital Business Awards and in the Scottish Design Awards. Um, so it's lovely that it's getting this recognition as a, as a decent app, but the accolades that mean the absolute most to us are the users, um, and this is what we monitor constantly. So um, thankfully, they are. Um, it's being received well. So across the, the Google Play and the Apple Store, um, there is an average rating of 4.4 .4 out of 5. Um, and the general feedback is really positive. We've even had a five star from allotment guy as he's tending to his turnips and his carrots. Um, but it's, it's vitally important that you put uh, resources aside to monitor this regularly because this can give you some really valuable insight and it can tell you if there's critical issues with your app. Um, that you need to fix pretty sharpish, or if there's usability issues, people just can't work out what the app's about or how to get through it, um, so that you can attend to that. And what's important for that is that you attend to it um, pretty, pretty quickly. So we made sure we had a service level agreement set up with our developer um, to make sure that there was an understanding of different levels of urgency and, and what examples of, of issues could be under, under that. So for instance, if there was a build issue and it just wasn't running on the phones that it should, um, you know, that was critical and we agreed that that would be fixed within a number of hours down to the cosmetic and the more nice to have uh, changes that would be then scheduled into the next system update. So it's really important to have that agreement with your developer and be very clear about what problems should be fixed and when. And um, because if issues start to happen, then you want to address them quickly before more negative comments get added to the App Store, which could then impact the amount of downloads that you're going to have. As well as looking at user data, as well as looking at the consumer feedback, um, it's also useful to have the right analytics package in place um, for your app to look at the user data and what that data is telling you in terms of how the users are interacting with the app. Um, and we've got about seven months of data now, and there's lots of useful insights there to take us into the next development of the app. And that's what's really important, to analyze that and how can that make progressive change in your app going forward and make it even more valuable for the, for the potential visitor. And this, um, so some of the data that's come through, one, one of the key things is that there's twice as many people looking at uh, the video content than there is the still content. So that's you know, a no-brainer for us. That's telling us that they want video content over the still content. So we need to produce more of that and then put that in going forward. Um, as well as that, you need to look at um, advances that are happening within the, the tech world with which in your product sits. So, you know, for virtual reality, um, we're now looking at 3D sound. At the moment, our app's got this tranquil music track that plays in the background, um, which is all very calming and lovely. But um, no, now, with 3D sound being a bit more accessible and a bit cheaper to record and plug in, um, we're looking at, okay, how could we do that so that we've got um, this 3D sound that's related to the environment they're in. So they could be standing in the Scottish landscape, Stags run past, or they hear hoofs behind them, they turn around and stags are running past them in that video. So that's something we're looking at going forward. And there's other things that data is telling us, um, which we're analyzing and thinking about what we can change going forward to make it more useful for the potential visitor. And um, so, yeah, so it's really important to um, look at those three sets of, of, of data on a regular basis. So the consumer feedback that's coming through, the user analytics that's coming through in the data, and looking at the the world your tech is in to see whether you can either stay ahead of the curve or stay on it or at least stay relevant and valuable to the consumer. Um, so that is uh, that is me coming to the end. That is our story. I hope you find it useful. Um, we have, uh, as I said at the beginning, you know, we've got a job to do to contribute to the Scottish economy, and I think challenging the every day for us is a way to do that, and we encourage us all to continue to do that. If you've got any content that you feel might be relevant for the app or anything you're thinking of developing, drop us an email um, and we'd like to have a chat with you. Sometimes the content may be relevant for the app itself. Sometimes it might be relevant for other marketing channels that we have, but we'll, we would love to have a wee chat with you about that. And, and finally, when we were launching the app and um, I was talking to some uh, press and we were initially launching it, the key question I always got asked was, do we think that this virtual world or this virtual Scotland will negate their need to come to Scotland and experience it for real. Um, and my answer to that was always a resounding no. So the example I would give was that we have this um, lovely uh, immersive 360 of Donauder Castle within the app, um, which is, is, is a stunning setting, but nothing will compete to standing on that cliff edge, looking across to the castle, the, the sea breeze washing over you and your senses igniting. And that, 
That special feeling is what we call the spirit of Scotland, and it's our hope that by creating a virtual Scotland, it will inspire people to come and experience that for real. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Mark. Uh, very interesting. And again, as we were saying this morning, data's not going away. VR is certainly not going away. It's, it's currently in the area of inspiration, as you're seeing there. But it's definitely, as prices drop and the technology becomes more pervasive, it's going to be used by increasingly hotels and restaurants and everybody, because people are going to start to use that to inspect where they're going and be inspired by where they're going. Uh, I like the idea of the 3D, 3D sound. Next year, I'm sure you know as well that there's going to be a big exhibition on the history of Scottish music, uh, which will take place actually in here as well as other venues uh, next spring and summer. And there may be a way of linking the two together. You know, I'm not sure if the Bay City Rollers outside Aberdeen. And <laughs> I'm not sure. Geez, I'm showing my age there, aren't I? <laughs> God almighty. I remember my sister. Uh, for those of you who are too young, this won't go uh, down well at all. Uh, there was a guy in the band called Woody in the Bay City Rollers. Google him. Look at his picture. You'll be shocked. Uh, <laughs> and my sister was in love with him when she was about 12 years old. And she had the tartan down the sides and all that there. That was my first encounter with Scotland. Okay? <laughs> it hasn't put me off, okay? Okay. And also the idea of video content is key. You know, the idea that people are looking more and more for video, which backs up, you know, we heard this morning from Shake House, uh, that, uh, the importance of video and how we've got, you know, incredible uh, opportunity to make good video uh, in the country. So there's, that point's very interesting as well.